I'm ready. This is uh, about 120 grit sandpaper. that epoxy I don't like it that's why I'm wearing a respirator okay so I'm removing my respirator so I can talk to you real quick and I'm putting it right back on but as you can see the area that I've sanded right here that should be sanded all the way through and through because it's not perfectly round you get little spots like this and I was only using a clay mold so that's to be expected so we're gonna have to sand until we have this entire surface matted like this and it's frosted as you might say and then we're gonna have to wet dry sand it by hand oh that's the fun part <laughs> my hair. This is the first time seeing my hair today. Does that tell you what kind of person I am? All right. Um, I got this halo here. I ain't Jesus. Nowhere near it. <laughs> it almost makes me look bald. There we go. This is what I look like bald. Ugh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. So the next part of this is wet drying to 400 uh, sand, 400 grit sandpaper. If you want to get nuts with it, go to 3000. Um, but it's a very long, tedious sanding project. This is a point in time where I'm not going to put this on film. I'm going to get a bucket of water, my sanding pads from uh, 220 to 3000, and I'm going to sit with a bucket of warm water and I'm going to watch a movie. <laughs> And then I'll show you what this is like. It's been done. And yeah, it's probably going to take the entire movie of constant sanding. Maybe an hour. It's not going to be a quick job. So this part of this task is kind of... Boom, baby. Okay, so here we have the finished polished piece or sanded piece. The 3,000 grit sandpaper. It looks a lot different than when I took it off at 100 grit. Now, you'll notice a couple of things on there. You can start to see some of the lines, layers that are on there, such as right here where this is gathered. That's the layer. You might see that white stuff and go, oh, no, it's root. No, it's not root. Those are just pits and holes where air bubbles had sat. And when I sanded it, they had gathered. So what I'll do is I'll just take an air compressor to it and blow it out, and those will be gone. No worries there. Um, other than that, we're going to go over a couple of options because this is only on 3,000 grit sandpaper. It's not completely smooth, like glass smooth, like it was when you first pull it out. Um, but since I did clay molds, they're never going to be perfectly glass smooth anyway. But uh, there's going to be a couple of options to get them to glass smooth, and we're going to go over three of them. <clears throat> okay, so I went and got this. Crystal clear enamel. Now, I said I wasn't going to do any enamel paints on the actual scepter, but when you come to things that are hard, when you get to those, you want enamel. Enamel is harder, better, and lasts a lot longer. So for this, this little semi-shiny thing, it's kind of got a, a near satin coat on it right now, but in the camera, it shows very shiny and reflective. So this this is the concept we're looking at this is epoxy two-part epoxy or i should show you the box easy cast two-part epoxy does not polish well so this 
is about as good as it can get without going with more sanding and more hours behind the sanding wheel. That's not fun. So this is pretty good on its own. Once I take the compressor to it and get all that white schmutz out. But a seal really helps. And that's why I have this. There's usually two types of seal. Now this is the, the basic level of seal. Um, you can get uh, spray seals that give it a coat of epoxy. It's great. It's plastic. Makes a very nice shiny coat. They're expensive. These are not. Does the same thing. Works really well on probably about 1200 to 1500 grit. I probably didn't need to take it down to 3000. I take it down to 3000 because I'm able to see. You probably see my finger behind there. I could see all the way through it. Now, with the light coming from the front, it reflects a lot of this pearlescent powder that's on here. Light from the back would make this a completely different story, and you would see how transparent it really is. Because looking at it from this side, it's an amazing little piece. Um, I've got, here they are, these little Walmart flashlights for a dollar a piece. I'm going to talk about repurposing something. Little LED flashlights. There you go. Yeah. That's great luminescent. Okay. So that's how it's going to be in the end. To make this shiny, I don't have to. I can keep it like this. I'm going to use this because it's easy to obtain, easy to coat with, and easy to treat. Um, a buffing wheel and, and polishing, it would be great if this was polyester. Polyester takes buffing really well. I've, I, the first one I made of these I cast with polyester. Stank to high heaven. It wasn't bad as a, as a result. I had to do the same thing with it, and I sanded it like this, and it came out great. Um, it's just that you can't do that with enamel. A third technique is to go ahead and mix another batch. And I'm going to have some dowel rods in here like this with the, uh, the lights around it. Mix another batch and pour it completely over it. Let it drip dry, or, well, not drip dry. Let it, let the let gravity take its, uh, work its magic over it, and it'll become cast in one coat of the same material that it's made of and it sticks to itself and that would be perfect and I'd have an extremely good layer. However, these take 48 hours at least to hard cure. This is hard cure. You hear that? Soft cure is where it's not plastic, it's kind of gummy. Um, I had a piece down here somewhere. That was still gummy, and it shouldn't be gummy anymore. It was the pad from my mixing cup. But when it's no longer gummy, it's hard cured. And if I wait uh, the 48 hours, then I'd be able to finish it up. But I need to finish it up now, so quick fix is that. You can see the sticks in there a little bit. Sometimes I bring the uh, focus. Sometimes I bring the um, cover that goes over it, made of warbler, just enough to be able to hide those from looking directly on. Because yeah, yeah, that worked. Probably didn't need to be that deep either. But better safe than sorry on something like that, you know?
All right, here's a quick rundown of what we've got here. This is a really old video card, one of those old 15 pins. They usually have blue tips on there, but it is what it is. So I split it apart, and now I've got access to all these wires. And I'll be able to use these to make the wiring for uh, the Loki jewel. This is the internals of the flashlight. It's one of those undercat brim flashlights, the little thing on here, and it attaches to the brim of your, your baseball cap. It has three LEDs, no resistors on it whatsoever, just a switch. I want the switch, I want the LEDs. Other than that, this entire thing is trash. I've got replacement battery holders. These are for these 2032s. The unmarked side is the negative, the marked side is the positive. And there you go. <clears throat> Top pin, that's my positive, that's my negative, positive, negative. You have to keep track of that while you do this. So here's the fun thing, positive, negative. This flashlight has them labeled, which is really nice. So positive goes here, which goes to the right side. Okay, every single one of those has a mark on them. There's a mark right here in the corner. That mark is the negative side. So positive, negative, depending on which side you look at, where the mark is is the negative side. So I have to separate these and that switch. Let's take one of these wires off. This is a little thing that I made. It is, this is a separate mini uh, clamp that I bought. I thought it was much bigger. There lies the joke. Size things up on Amazon properly. So I have this little bitty clamp and I just attached it to this piece of wood with a little stem on there so I can take it off, move it, and turn it if I need to. This is my homemade helping hand. Really not fancy. Okay. These are clippers, but I can also use them as pliers. So they're multi-purpose. And this soldering iron is not going to damage them. Very hard to see from here, but there are little tabs on there, little metal tabs, and that's what you solder to. There's one LED light. Also, carbon scoring on those things. Um, if you get your tip dark and black, you can re-tin it with solder scrape it off, clean it, and that gives you good metal contact. If you lose that tin, that tinning, or the silver appearance on there, you're not getting full heat induction and it's going to take more time to get the job done. Okay, the last tip on taking a, 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 an existing board a part like this for parts is you have to take each part slow. You cannot rush. Or it will ruin your life and you will lose a part.
And if you're like me and you're reusing these parts for other things, that's not going to be healthy. <laughs> Waste an entire dollar. Oh, one more. There we go. Another thing you have to be careful of is bending these too many times. If you bend them a lot, they will not go over well. Okay, so a quick lesson on three post switches, which is what this is. This is a tiny switch, and I like to use it because it'll fit on here. And I'll be able to nestle it right there. So this tiny little switch, three post switch, um, it doesn't matter which two you choose, but the center one is always one post. You could go to the outside or the other outside. That corresponds with what side the switch is on. So if it is on the right side, that means center and right post are active. If I slide it to the left, that means center and left post are active. So if center and right post are hot wires, means there's electricity running through them, and I have it slid over to the left, that means the connection is broken. Center and right slide to the right, that closes the connection, and I now have current running through it. So that's what those posts mean. All right, so there's one, there's two. Where will I put three? It's almost like I only need two really for this. But if I use two, there'll be too much voltage for these two, and I'd have to reduce the voltage for them. Each um, button battery is three volts. It uses two of them. You add that together, that's six volts. So if I have six volts, three lights, that means each light uses two volts. So six volts, three lights, two volts each. I have six volts, two lights, that's four volts. I overvolt, I burn it out, I ruin it. If I have four volts needed, I only use one battery at three volts, I overstress the battery and it dies quicker. So match it as best you can. So in order to A, resist, one volt, or sorry, two volts, to two batteries to make six volts operate as three volt or four volts because two lights. I need to re resist the current with a resistor. I have a box of resistors, and I could do all the math and figure out which resistor I need to take six volts to four volts and have it run through two instead of the three for six volts. But that's sometimes more complicated than it needs to be. All I have to do is just find a place for this extra battery. <laughs> that's the only thing that needs to be done. Or an extra extra light. That's the only thing that I need to do. So what's, what's more worth it? Figuring out how much I have to reduce the voltage by or just finding a third spot? Why not? I'll put it right there. That looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Now there's two ways to do this. In a line with a single wire hitting this, then hitting that, then hitting that, hitting that, but connect the dots. Um, you have to go like a battery from positive to negative to negative to positive to negative to positive, so on and so forth. You just have to keep jumping. So I can have it a single line running all the way through that. One wire and it's done. However, if this one goes bad, like on your Christmas lights, they all stop working. So one goes bad, they all stop. If I do it like a ladder, with two going up and down the entire way, like rails on a train, straight up, straight down, I create a parallel circuit. And if this one goes bad, it still supplies the resistance but it doesn't stop this one from working, or this one. So it still works, it's just down one light. That's preferred. Okay. It's a skill to learn how to only cut the vinyl around the wire, because 
I will a lot of times cut too much and end up with a cut wire and that is very hard to do when you're about to do what I'm about to do <laughs> so I'm gonna space these out about a centimeter apart or half an inch whatever you like to use See that? One down, three to go. Now if you're wondering why I don't do this with a pair of wire strippers, these are wire strippers right here in the back end. All they do is just, this wire is too tiny. All they do is just cut it apart, tear it. Do not strip the wire. Ooh, hey, I stripped a piece. After five tries. <laughs> uh oh. It's crooked. It's so tiny, it almost like you don't care. <laughs> technique. One side done. And I'm just double checking that all the positive and negatives are on the right side. Well, on the correct side. Green is positive, gray is going to be negative. Trick of the trade, any cosplay trade, any business trade, never assume your work is correct. Verify over and over again. This is a voltage tester, volt ohm meter. Oh, come on. We're live, we're not calibrated. All right. Negative, positive, no. Ah. Backwards. All right, good news is, is that all three are working. Um, okay, well, I got that backwards. Green is negative, gray is positive. All right, I went and got epoxy. Epoxy sticks to epoxy. All right, so this is going to go in here, out there. But these aren't secure. Do this all at once. Actually, I want to use a faster drawing epoxy. <laughs> I have concerns about how fast it takes to cure this DevCon stuff, which is like the generic off-brand you get from Walmart or wherever, is in essence 
cheaper and cures faster. Okay, it's not coming out right. There it goes. One side came out a lot, the other side did not. All right, <laughs> I'm using the same stick that I'm gonna stick in here to stir with, so I have no wasted material. Step one, mix. Step two, spread. And I am spreading it on the inside. You would think that you don't have to do this. You don't. But that helps it make a nice, clear contact when you have enough in here. It's over every square centimeter, millimeter, inside of it. So you have no waste, which is easy to do. Because technically all that's waste. All right. There we go. We are glued in place. All right, this little booger broke. So I had to switch to another switch. It's a bigger switch. I think I had extra ones of those, huh? Okay, I forgot to do this on these. I remembered on the battery, but I have these shrink tubes and I put them around the posts and these shrink tubes prevent extra stress on the wire from bending and breaking over time. So these are good, but I forgot them right here. So I'm going to end up laying these flat against the switch itself, and then I'm probably going to put some glue over them. I did that with um, the LEDs on the bottom here. They're completely encased in that five minute epoxy. So I'm going to have to do that with these. I don't, I prefer these, the shrink tubing, because it looks much cleaner, looks mess, less like a mess, and protects it better. Okay, when I make this connection, it should light up. Confirmed off. Confirmed on. Confirmed working. Cool. This is not a pencil tip. This is a flat tip. And I like flat tips because when I deal with small items like this, I can use it as a small platter to coat things and solder because sometimes it doesn't cooperate. Sometimes is an understatement. There are a lot of times it doesn't cooperate. So if this particular build ever comes back on a YouTube video, so what the hell was this guy thinking? Well, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking to yourself, dude? I sure the heck am talking to myself, Dot. Do you want to talk with me? Or do you want to talk to yourself with me? No. Oh, you don't want to be crazy? I don't want to be nuts. But that's half the battle. Whatever. <laughs> Why don't you want to be crazy with me, Doc? Because really, you're not crazy. Are you sure about that? How do you know? And are you really an authority on that? I just know. 
<laughs> you may think you're crazy, but you're not. But I want to be crazy. Oh, no. Not me, huh? You may think you're going to be nuts, but you're not nuts. I'm not nuts. Well, Dot, thank you for that bit of confidence. Sometimes we need assurances in our life. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> What are you looking for? I don't know what I want to drink. You want drinks. Who's that girl is it? Huh? Phillips. Is it Jack? Nope. <laughs> Why would you want that? pancake mix? Do you, do you make it with flour? Sure do. Do we have flour? Sure do. I didn't see any. That's because it's in that pantry. This cabinet? Yep. Oh, what else do we need? Eggs, milk. Oh, we got that. We got that. Sure do. I might want that for supper. You saying you want pancakes for supper? Yeah. Like my life? Huh? Like oh. my life? Oh, how'd you do that? Uh, I'm a genius. I guess you are. <laughs> how'd you do it, though? I'm a genius. Where'd you put the light? See all the circuitry right there? What? All the wires. Oh, yeah? But how do you do it? Turn it on. Little switch right there. What? I can't see Little it. Little switch. It's all you black know. anyway, so you can't see anything. I'm blind anyway. Yeah, so how you see any of this anyway? Uh, can you see any of this? I don't think you can see any of I this. I don't think I can see. Let me see. You see a whole bunch of nothing. See? No, I don't know what you're <laughs> Didn't you make one before? Yep, sure did. What'd you put it on? I forgot. Same thing. I mean, who would you make it for? Janet? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I made one for Janet, but... Is that the device you use? That's the old flashlight. Oh. Who are you making that for? Someone else. Oh, a, a customer? Yep. It's going to be put on the sword? Yep. Oh, okay. What happened to your white ones? There's Do one right there. It's painted gray. Oh, where's the other white one? It's out in the garage painted gold. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, you smart thing. Smart cookie. How much you charging for this? Not stuff? enough. I never charge enough. Electronics are none. Flick. <gasps> oh, oh, okay. That scared me. Huh. It is a little flaky on that switch, though, isn't it? That's time to go wash my hands. Let this glue dry. I got really involved, and I got really far. So I apologize. Here it is. And it's pre-painted, mostly done form. That's a warbler wrap. These are individual warbler strings that I wrapped around and then sanded to make more round. Actually, I, at first I got them hot and I pressed them in with my fingernail like that on both sides. And then I gave them a little sanding to uh, even them out with a little stinger file. Thingy. 
and now it's time for painting. It's going to get a coat of black because this is all black and then it's going to get a little bit of gold right here. Actually, I'm going to use the same bronze that I used on the main uh, piece just right here. And it's probably going to round it out and that piece is done. This is a camel hair brush. It's for volume, not for detail or anything like that. I keep using all these different brushes. In essence, I could have used the other brushes, but I like what I like. Wormwood has a neat texture. It, or Warbler untreated, has this slightly rough, very alive texture. Instead of being boring. It's also broken. Uh, the texture is broken, so there's no repeating patterns on Warbler. Uh, unlike wood, where you can see the grain, even though it's not a repeating pattern, it's an obvious pattern. I do not use Warbler in a lot of projects. I only use it where hand building something is more fortuitous. Because could you imagine making this and then sculpting it? That is actually what I want to do. I want to get to the point where this is completely sculpted. I would have loved to have 3D printed this. The only thing I don't like about 3D printing is that you dedicate a lot of time to an unknown re uh, uh, result. Sometimes you get a screw up and a hand cast piece or hand uh, uh, made piece, and you could recover it because the skills that are in hand making a project like this are second nature to recovery. So before you get into 3D printing, always make something by hand. All right, short bristles for control. Here's some paint control. I'm not using any masking. I'm just using the, the bristle flow of the brush around the edge to go from that brown warbler color to black. Since this is a flat bristle, it's not a chisel bristle, I'm holding the brush perpendicular to the surface. If it was a chisel bristle, I'd be holding it like this. So if you like chisel bristles, if you use chisel bristles, you'll hold your brush differently. Probably a chisel bristle would help you see it better right now. See it. <laughs> One benefit to shaking it up is you get paint on the sides in easy reach.
too much on the brush. Too much paint is hard to control. In case you're wondering, as I'm turning it, I'm looking for the reflection of the surface, not just so I can see the surface. I want to see the reflection of the surface in the light. I took too long, my cat left. She wanted attention, and I was busy in thought. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. Oh, my goodness. You're so happy to get cats. the end of it. It's imperfect. No recording for no reason. Okay, so because we have been handling this with our fingers and putting our oils all over it, though I wash my hands, denatured alcohol, whatever. Color. Look at that shine. And then it's going to evaporate and be dull. Neat. Okay. So I did expect that to happen. As I was describing. So you see how I went from the shiny to kitty. I mean, uh, uh, the dull. That is a sanding cheat technique. Now, when I... Uh, this It's because it's epoxy. Now, when I give it a coat of acrylic, it's going to be able to handle the acrylic and stick to it much better than if not. And all the oils have been taken off of it, so it's ready to rock and roll. Um, it's cold outside, so I'm not bringing you with me. I apologize, but I'm just giving it a clear coat. I'm going to hold it like this and spray it. That's not fancy. Done. That literally took 30 seconds. Oh, baby. Ooh. Ooh. I love the way that looks. I, I can't flip the switch because I banged it up there. That's all going to be uh, a gloss. Oh, look at that. That is just freaking out. Beautiful. When it's not shiny like this, it hides so much of that inner beauty. This is, this is really what I've been waiting for. God, frick. Oh, even the gold turned out nice. See, that's that that's that texture Horbla gives. Mmm, I, I really like this. Ooh, now I have to hold it for 20 minutes because I have nothing to put it on. Okay. Okay, so I'm holding it um, with the light behind it, and that added an entirely new dimension to it. I could see all the, the glass I put in there. And I was getting a little disappointed that you couldn't see all that. I'm, I'm just royally impressed. This is exactly the way I went. No, that's not an air bubble. <laughs> that's a glass bead. Well, maybe it is an air bubble. It's really hard to say. Okay, yeah, those are air bubbles. But it has a dimension. It's got something in there. Oh, but the camera is not picking up on the pearlescent. With the light behind it, you can't see the pearlescent unless the light is in front of it. <laughs> I love that glass texture. I'm sorry. I'm just in awe of it. Oh, man. That mouse is really... <laughs> well, thank you, mouse. Yeah, make that awesome. Okay, so that was the end of a four-part Loki staff build. And um, I, if you watched it all, thanks. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to limit doing this at the end of a, uh, of a, of a video. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. My goal is to actually do nothing 
but giveaways and have the Etsy shop for other things. What I'm doing is kind of copyrighted and selling it is a little problematic and I don't want to get a cease and desist letter. So my goal and what I'm asking of you is to say, hey, support me on Patreon. You support me on Patreon, we make the goals, we will start doing weekly giveaways, probably. Probably start off with a monthly giveaway. Uh, the first goal is at 20 people, and once we're at 20 people, giveaway. Once we're at 100 people, giveaway. And I'll probably do some more between. Um, but once the um, Patreon reaches an income, I could do steady giveaways. Just, hey, if you're following me, you're going to get something. Eventually, maybe. <laughs> it depends on how many giveaways I get. But I, I would like to get weekly giveaways done because it takes me about a week to make one project. One project done, give it away. Hey, easy, right? Um, pending Etsy sales, and, and, and I may not have to do Etsy for too much longer. I'll just do the Patreon and give it to you. That's my goal. That's what I want to do. So if you like this and you like the way it turned out, hit me up on Patreon. Give me a little donation. And uh, you'll get some other perks, too, like, um, well, see the Patreon to see exactly what perks I'm giving away. I'm trying to have fun with this. And if you like those perks, hop aboard. We'll have fun, too. And uh, there'll be a Discord channel. If you'd like to join there, you can see some of my archives there. And it's really young right now, so there's not much. So join us. Join the very small crowd. Make it bigger. And, and the bigger it is, the more opportunities we have to do projects, live stream, eventually. I'm not there yet, but we'll live stream someday. And uh, we'll just hang out and give away things. You like that, staff? It's becoming really popular. How would you like to not pay for it? Okay, so you pay Patreon, but it's... You get what I'm saying. Thanks.